following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. I am back, and you are Comfortably Zoned with me, the Zigzag Man, in Alameda, California, right across the bay from San Francisco, and across the moat from Oakland, down by the lagoon, as Archie Bunker would have said, at the 420 studio, and I get to talk to some of the most interesting people on the planet week after week. I'm very psyched today because I continue my streak with a renaissance man. He's into comedy, he's into acting, he's into teaching, he's into coaching. Alan Gitlin, how are you, sir? Okay, it's the G-Man. They call me the G-Man. That's my stage name, Alan Gitlin, the G-Man. All right. A tribute, Alan, a you're tribute in to New my dad. Jersey. You're I'm in New, New Jersey. Jersey. I'm a New Jersey guy. I'm a Jersey guy. Yeah. Tell me about growing up in New Jersey and what inspired you to comedy. Who made you laugh when you were growing up? Uh, when I was growing up, I loved Buddy Hackett. Buddy Hackett was my favorite. Always right. will be and always was. Chinese um, restaurant from column A to column B is a very funny man. He yeah, very funny. As a matter of fact, I do a comedy act where I tell one of his jokes that's 30 years old. And it's one of the funniest jokes that I ever heard in my life, and I still laugh at it. Um, here's I'm just going to tell your audience about it. I don't, some of them will remember it, some won't. Um, he told a joke on Johnny Carson about it's got to be 30 or 40 years ago. I'm not exactly sure when. And what it is is this guy goes duck hunting, and he shoots down a duck. And the duck lands on a barn. And he goes to get it, and the farmer comes out and says, where do you think you're going? He says, I'm going to get my duck. The farmer says, wait a minute, wait a minute. That landed on my property. It's my duck now. The guy says, whoa, wait, I shot it down. So the farmer says, you know, where are you from? So he says, I'm from the city. He goes, well, you don't know country rules, do you? He says, what do you mean country rules? Country rules, you shoot something down, it lands on my property, it's mine. The guy said, listen, I've been out here six weeks. It's the only thing I shot down. i got to go back with something. And the farmer says, I don't care if you've been out six months. That duck is mine now. And they're going back and forth for like 40 minutes. And finally, the, the farmer says, you know what? You don't seem like a bad guy. I'll tell, it, I'll tell you what. We'll sell this country style. And the guy says, what do you mean country style? He said, well, you kick me in the nuts, I kick you in the nuts. You kick me in the nuts, I kick you in the nuts. And who's ever left standing, that's who's duck it'll be. And the guy says, not for nothing, but that, that sounds a little painful. But if that's what i got to do to get my duck, okay, let's go. So the farmer says, I go first, and he kicks him as hard as he can. Oh, my God, oh, my God. He rolls on the ground for like 45 minutes. He goes, oh, my God, I'm never using my nuts again. Oh, my God, what are you kicking me so hard for? And after 45 minutes, he finally stumbles to his feet, and he goes, I guess it's my turn, huh? The farmer says, no, nah, you can have the freaking duck. <laughs> 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 it is so, but Buddy Hackett on Johnny Carson rolls on the floor and knocks over the little coffee table that Ed McMahon used to have his coffee on. So, of course, the crowd goes nuts. And then when he gets up and he tells the punchline, the whole place went crazy, totally crazy, you know. So I actually tell that in my my act. It's a joke that I I truly love, you know. And and I'm sure you give Buddy credit for it. Oh, absolutely I do. Yep, I say stolen from Buddy Hackett 30 or 45 or 40 years ago, something like that. That's correct. So what inspired me to get into comedy? Um, I always was a little funny when I was younger. I still think I'm a little funny, but some people say I'm funny, but that's besides the point. Um, but I used to, we used to be at a dinner table, and my dad used to work late, and we'd eat dinner at 5 o'clock, and somehow it stretched into 6 or 7 or 8 because I'd be telling jokes, and eventually I got out of line, and my mother would slap me in the face, and I ended up going to school with handprints on my face, although she denied it later on in life. But my sister and I, we, we were there. We, we, we both say the same thing, so it's two against one. Um, but uh, and then I went, um, I went, did some acting when I was younger, around 21, 22 years old, and then I got a full time job, and I got had got married, had kids, and I kind of lost my creativity a little bit. And uh, that'll happen. Somewhere around 43, 44, um, I got divorced, and I saw an ad for Caroline's uh, Comedy Club in New York. They were doing a school uh, one night a week for 10 weeks. I think it was $400, something like that. And um, it was run by this lady called Ann Smith, who had one time uh, written for Letterman and Leno both. And she decided she wanted to come back to the East Coast. And she was hooked up with Caroline's. And um, I went. To, I took the course. Um, they can't. They can't say you're really not funny. 
they try to critique your writing and get used to stage time. But if you're not on stage all the time, you, you never get used to like, stage time. You know, you're all over the place. So um, can't be learned in ten weeks. No, no. They well, it basically they critique your writing. They're trying to get you to your, your, make sure your your jokes are funny, and um, stage time. Of course, the first time you go up on stage, you're nervous, right? I don't care who you are. You know, and if you haven't gone up in three or four years, you're gonna, it's going to be just like you started all over again. You know, it's what something did you, you have to learn just get used to. from that class that you pass on to your students today? Uh, I learned that everybody's sense of humor is different, and what you may think is funny, the other guy might not. And so you may go up on stage and bomb a little bit, but not all your jokes, but maybe some of your jokes will bomb. You know, and I'm actually compared to Seinfeld. I'm an observation comedian. And um, what that means to a lot of people, a lot of people don't know what that means, so I will explain it, and now I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things, that I, how I do it. Um, I, I actually drive a Ford Explorer, and Ford used to have a commercial that said the Ford Explorer is the best-selling SUV on the planet. Well, let me ask you a question. Do we sell SUVs on other planets? Not that I know of, okay? Or um, there was a cemetery near my house, um, a big cemetery that had a sign, open house on Saturday and Sunday. So I made a joke about it. I want to die when it's not open, you know. But <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, but these are things that people just drive by and pay no attention to, you know. They, they, they don't pay attention. I pick on commercials, um, even Geico. Geico has a commercial. Even a, ca a caveman can do it. Uh, I don't think they had cars when cavemen were around. So, you know, okay. it's just... I picked that stuff how, up. You know, stuff how like has that. humor yeah. evolved over the years, and how has political correctness screwed it up? Political correctness has screwed up everything. I mean, uh, you can't say this, you can't say that. You know, you can't do this. Matter of fact, this is, I don't even think, uh, not too many people know this. And right now I'm putting together an act, a two-man act, with a, a, a black gentleman um, who's a comedian in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and he's going to be Frank White, and I'm going to be Bob Black. Um, okay. It's a two-man comedy thing. We're going to pick on both races a little bit, and it's going to be funny as hell. You know, like I wrote a couple of bits already, and I'll just throw a couple of them out there for you real quick for your audience. Um, I'm, I'm Jewish, and so he asked me a question like, what do you do on Christmas Day, being a Jewish person? And I say, well, we go to the movies and eat Chinese. And then I ask him, what do you do as a black man? Well, we're robbing your house while you're at the movies and eating Chinese, <laughs> which which is funny. But you know, people are afraid to talk like this, and it's actually it's you could you could do this in front of a black audience or white audience, and it's funny because you know you're going to start off with Frank White and Bob Black, you know, and he's the Frank White and I'm Bob Black. Right there is funny. Well, you know? if you're say, if you're saying it, it ain't funny. But if he's saying it, I'm black yeah. and I come out. You know, right. Um, right. 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 So it's you know it's gonna be fun. it's gonna be a funny show. Um, matter of fact, I just took up with a guy who's in charge of some entertainment in Atlantic City and uh, and uh, Myrtle Beach, and he's telling me when I get the act together, you know, get in touch with him, and he wants to book us. You know, beautiful. So uh, beautiful. Yeah, I'm also uh, podcast is, is host. Booking. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. The hard part is getting booked. What do you tell right. people about right. rejection when uh, they're starting out in comedy? Okay, it, it, comedy or anything in life, you can't take it personally. If you know what you have is talent or you think it's talent, don't give up on it. Never give up on your, on your dream. Somebody will listen to you. Somebody will think you're funny if you're a comedian. Um, if you have a script writer, somebody will like your script. You just got to pound on, on 9,000 doors, and the 9,001 guy might like it. Okay, you can never give up. I was a salesman on the road, so I handle rejection a lot better than other people. You know, um, I learned a long time ago. I was a salesman for 35 years, and the first sales manager I had, I knew him a long time, and he liked me. And after about a month of selling, he said, "What's the matter, Alan? You're not smiling. You're not laughing." And I said, "His name was Al," and he gave me my first briefcase, actually, which I had up until about five years ago. Um, and I said, "Al, I, 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 you know, people are hiding from me. I see them. I see them hiding, and they're hiding from me. But they're telling me they're not there. They don't really bother with me." And he said, if you don't take it personally, he said, they don't want to see the 19 guys in front of you, and they don't want to see you. It's not personal. And if you get that through your skull, your thick skull of yours, which I had a thick skull, everything will be fine. 
So that's what I tell people. Never give up on your dream. Okay. Um, can you give an example of uh, somebody who's been helped by that, by, um, by your advice to them, who oh, yeah. come back to you and said, hey, the, Alan, th- thank you, because as a coach, as a salesman, as uh, a performer, yes. we need that uh, that uh, compliment every now and again. We need that right. assurance. And right. um, I'm, I'm sure if they told you something positive, it st- sticks in your mind. Tell me oh, Absolutely. I, I, um, when I worked as a salesman, there was another company that we, that we, were, we met at a seminar, and a senior guy said to this young guy about 25, and I was about 40, he said, I want you to travel with this guy. He said, I can see his attitude. He's going to teach you a lot of things on the road. We used to, used to go out maybe once or twice a month, and sometimes – we had two different uh, venues, but sometimes we would go somewhere and he wouldn't get the sale, but I would get the sale, or vice versa. And he said, he used to say to me, you know, you're not afraid of anything. And, and right now he's a sales manager out in Denver. And he's thinking about bringing me out there to give his salesman a, uh, a crash course on how to really sell and how to face rejection and how to overcome rejection. And that's, that's a real compliment to me. It really is. You know, we became friends, and he said that, you know, the reason why I became a sales manager and I was able to do certain things was because I learned them from you, and that's a really nice thing to hear. You know? That's beautiful. I'm yeah. glad you're getting, getting that back because yep. the rejection could add up unless, unless you get positive things. Um, Correct. And everybody is human. And right. it should go, go as a, uh, a lesson for all of us we're just communicating with people, and you could right. you could uh, let them down easy. You don't have to right. come down on them just because you're jealous right. of the fact that they make their own hours and they right. work on commission, and their their income right. isn't limited, and they get to right. write off stuff. So you don't like them all of here's, a sudden. Here's I'm going to tell you an example of something that how I re, how I overcame rejection one time. I was, it was about 4.30, and I was trying to get into this truck company. We sold, um, we sold, I sold parts and got service work on, on the road for a Ford dealer who I made number 10 in the country, not in Jersey, number 10 in the country in parts and service, and I was the only salesman. They got five awards in three years from me. But anyway, so I go to this trucking company, and this lady is backing out, and she stops me, and she says, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to knock on the door. She goes, oh, don't you see the sign that says no soliciting? And I said, yeah, I know that, but if I paid attention to that sign, I wouldn't have a job. And then she said, the guy's not going to answer the door because he's getting ready to leave. I said, well, let me knock on the door and see what happens. So she pulls out. I knock on the door. The guy gives me a half hour of his time. Didn't buy anything, but he gave me a half hour of his time. So next time I was in that area, I stopped by again and asked for him. Unfortunately, he left the company at the time, but that's not the point. She, She didn't want me to even knock on the door. You know, and I said, "Listen, if, if I pay attention to the sign, right? You know what I'd right. say? I'd say, I'd uh, if somebody asked me about a no soliciting sign, I said, you know, it's funny. I sell no soliciting signs. Right, right. Your well, sign doesn't work. Watch your let me, mine. It's a <laughs> let me tell you how I used to get into a lot of people. If I went into a receptionist and and they say, can I help you? And I would say, no, you really can't help me because I put two psychiatrists out of work." Now, if the receptionist laughed, I knew I had a shot. If she went, huh, what are you talking about? I knew I was in trouble, you know, because I broke her down a little bit without her realizing it. And then, you know, I could get in a little bit. I made a little, I got, I got her to laugh a little bit, and I broke down that wall a little bit. But if they didn't laugh, then I knew I wasn't going anywhere. You know, they were right. ser- dead and serious about the job. Before we get back to talking about yes. comedy, I'll yes. give my Sorry. one tip to salesmen. Don't be frustrated. No. By talking to the wrong per- people. That's Talk correct. to the person that's going to make the decision and know right. who he or she is instead right. of going up uh, up the line, this, that, and the other right. thing. Talk to that correct. person right away and make sure that they're the one that makes the decision. Don't that's waste right. your voice. Don't waste your, your up or whatever it is. And, and you know what I tell out. people, Ralph, that in this business that we're in, I tell people, you know, the dream of being a star is a nice dream to have, okay? 
there's 9,000 actors and 8,000 are starving, okay? So you ha have some fun. You make a little money. You never know who you meet on the way up. You never know and who you're talking And enjoy it. And yes. enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy it. Have That's fun. The, the main yes. thing. Make it your passion. Absolutely. Make it work right. your passion. You won't have to worry about the hours, and you won't right. have to keep track of how much am I being paid. Right, right. This, exactly that, right. This, that, the other thing. Have fun yep. doing it. Um, exactly. I have fun in every shoot I do. Uh, everybody knows me by the, by the end of the shoot. I have business cards. That's acting 101 to get business cards and give them out to everybody possible that's on the set because you never know where they're going to be down the road. Uh, they might just remember you. Hey, remember that guy was, that gave us that card on that last set? Maybe we could use him in this other part. You know, he was funny. He talked to everybody. You know, maybe we could, maybe we could use him in something else. You never know. You never know who, who's going to know what. Follow up with a phone call. Nice to talk right. to you on the, yep. the other day and uh, leave him a Correct. message and do, do all that right. stuff that it takes and get referrals. Any salesperson out there, you don't want to get up every day and start the, start the process all Cold. over again. Cold. It right. makes it much easier if somebody is referring you to somebody yes. else and they say, yep. I did a great job for me. He can do a great right. job for you. And people love to do that. They love other people's success, and they love that's to correct. have a hand in it. A warm, a warm call is always better than a, be a cold call. That's definitely. That's no there's question. no doubt about that. Absolutely. No question. And you got to learn. What's your next gig? What's your What's your my next, next gig? gig? And how can this you is, be reached? Okay, my next gig is um, I wrote a script with another gentleman. It's my idea. And we're going to have a trailer made in Chicago probably in May, a friend of mine. And I'm going to push it to Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. Uh, right now it's called Adam Goldsmith's Private Eye. And uh, I've been working on it for five years off and on, and now it's ready to go. Um, it's about a detective living now who uses no technology. Um, he's a cross between Colombo and James Bond. He's Colombo because he figures everything out by his gut. And he's James Bond because he's betting everything in sight, including the secretary who has knee pads in her drawer. Ah, um, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, he uh, drives the first car he alone. It, it, it's nice that you have the equipment. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yes. It's yes. better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. That's correct. So he, he, yeah. he drives the first car he ever owned. He lives in the same house he grew up in. He eats breakfast most days in the same diner. He has a beeper, which nobody has these days. Right. Um, when his beeper goes off, he asks people if, they could, if he could use his cell phone, and then he has to call people like three or four times because they don't recognize the name or number that's coming up. Right. <laughs> and he carries an Instamatic camera, so when he's going on case, he takes pictures with an Instamatic camera where the film comes out, you know, a couple seconds later. You know, you just shake it a couple times. Right. Um, he wants to live back in the age before technology took over. But there's a lot of twists and turns. He's also a world-class Texas Hold'em player. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns. There's five main characters that I have in it. And we have eight episodes written. It's a whole season written, which is eight episodes. And we have to have a trailer made, Alan, and then we got to get a literary agent. Huh? Can you tell me something about your writing process? Everybody's different. Do you set yeah. a time to write with the, an appointment with yourself, or do you write when the spirit moves you? Do you take notes during the day and transcribe them into a book? Or that kind uh, of thing? When I, well, if I write a comedy like bit, or all right, if I write a comedy bit, um, if I if I notice something at a restaurant or something something I notice, I try to write it down as soon as possible, and then I have like a folder that I put it in, and then every once in a while I go through the folder and I clean it up and I write it on a piece of paper so I have it for a later day. As far as writing, um, the idea for the script was mine. The characters were mine. My partner wrote the script. He's done a few little scripts of his own. And so I tweaked them a little bit here and there. I wanted this put in. I wanted that put in. So he did most of the writing of the script. But it was my idea, and the five main, the five main characters were blown up by me um, and developed by me. Um, he is a police officer in New York City now. Um, his time is limited. I'm trying to get a literary agent. I'm trying to get a, um, a trailer made. And uh, we're going to go from there. So uh, we'll see. But it's, right now it's called Adam Goldsmith's Private Eye. I don't know what it's going to be okay. called. If, if I'd like to sell a whole project to one of them and stay on as a consultant. 
you know. And you can reach me at the G Man Cometh on Facebook or my website, www.thegmand.net. Okay, now how about a phone number? Some people just. 908 I talked over you, I'm sorry. Would you oh, okay. That, please? That's all right. 908 896 4977. I can be reached any time of the day. If I don't answer, just leave a message and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And I will help anybody uh, Alan, out if terrific. anybody wants some help. <laughs> Thank you. You are, you are terrific. Uh, Thank you. I hope people get in contact with you. And mm -hmm. uh, tell us what city you're in exactly. Uh, I'm actually in Woodbridge, New Jersey. I grew up there, a uh, small town in Island, which is a part of Woodbridge Township. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately now, I don't know, the town got taken over by, uh, and I hate to say this, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be prejudiced, but the Patels. <laughs> okay, you don't. You, you didn't no. need it that much. No, you, you were able I know. to get it out. Yes, um, I know. But they, they've taken over my little town that I grew up in completely. Well, it's, um, it's actually called Little India. It's actually called Little India. And it's the biggest have they shopping area. Rich town with great food and. Uh, uh, food. They've they've in, they've redone the whole town pretty much with their own culture. And everybody uh, from any state in the Union knows about Island, New Jersey, and they call it Little India. They have about a five-mile stretch of all Indian stores and uh, restaurants. And uh, on the weekends, oh, you cannot, get through, you cannot go through there. You yeah. are absolutely blessed. You're uh, yes. in a diverse area, and you get, yes. you get to meet people from all over the world. And uh, That's correct. I'm happy for you, Alan. Okay. All right, and All right. Um, I just want to tell you, you're a terrific guest, and you're welcome Thank back you, any time. The show is comfortably zoned with me, the Zigzag Man. I'm in okay. Alameda, California, and you're in New Jersey. Now, weather-wise, before we go, mm -hmm. what kind of year yeah. has it been for you? Uh, it's been a good year for me. It's been, it hasn't been too bad. You know, right now it's about now, 32 degrees, 30, huh? Uh, weather, you haven't had many storms or any storms? No, not too many. We've had a, a bunch of little storms, nothing major really. We're, due, we're actually due for a major storm probably. We've had a bunch of storms at three, four inches. That's not that's not that terrible. They last a day or two and then they're gone, you know. But we haven't had that many real bad snowstorms this year. So we'll get, we're due to have one at least. Well, it's uh, getting spring. Are you a baseball fan like me? Oh, absolutely. Big Yankee fan, yes. Big Yankee I'm a, fan. Oh, yeah. well, I'm, you a, know. I'm a baseball historian. Well, you'll have to, Let's, you know, I have uh, a podcast right. network, and most of it is baseball. And really? And we have a Yankee show, as a matter really? of fact. Really? I didn't know that. And I and I collect sports memorabilia. I have a, 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 a my, uh, my collection is worth, Somewhere between, I'm taking a guess at 25 to 75 grand. Wow! I have some interesting pieces that are numbered, one of 10, one of 15. I have a piece that's matter of fact, I'm going to sell off a piece in September. It's a uh, jet jersey from 1969 team, and there's 28 right. signatures on it, and it's the only one out there. Hey, does it have P.D. Lamans on it? Does it have Bake Turner? Does it has Bake Turner, have yes. Ralph, Ralph Baker? Yes, it um, does. It has Maynard, has Sauer, has Namath. All the big guys are on it. Gunther, the linemen. Yeah. It's uh, the only yeah, one that I'm exists a in the yeah. as, a, as a lifelong sports fan, i got to tell you, that yeah. jet o upset of the Colts. And it's one of the best upsides ever in football. years. Yeah. Um, th that was... Terrific. Kill Bubba yep. Kill. That's how That's remember how Baltimore was favored and how yep. uh Joe Willie yep. talked Joe to said the I guarantee it. I guarantee he we're gonna win. Talk. He walked yep. the talk. But you know yep. what? In my back of my mind, United mm -hmm. sitting on the bench right. he stayed with Morrill an awful yep. long time. I remember yep. the picture of, of Orr in the end zone waving his arms. Yeah. Um, I'll always think was there a little, given the meaning mm -hmm. of that game and how the merger was 
uh, right. affected and how right. both TV stations were carrying it and how Al right. Davis was involved. And um, Lamar Hunt was involved. Yeah, Lamar Hunt was absolutely. involved. Absolutely. Those yep. big bucks changed hands. Uh, in That's that very game. right. Yeah, that uh, was that was that caused the merger pretty much. Right, yeah. and they didn't go to Johnny U. <laughs> That's and, correct, and who uh, was one of the best quarterbacks ever at the time. Absolutely, anyway. absolutely. Yeah, Alan, we'll have fans. to talk sports next time. Absolutely, more. absolutely. All right, my friend. All right, um, my friend. Thank you. I'm going to send you a link to this as soon as it's published. Okay. And thank, thank you very you much, for well. joining us. No problem. I'll thank you very much. Anytime. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for listening, everybody. The proceeding was a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you for listening.